We are just outside the Broadenstein Tunnel, facing away from the tunnel, and we are heading towards Norton Junction. We were last night having this big discussion and calculation as to whether we'd go up towards Northampton, but we've decided we'll save that for when we come down the River Neen, whenever that is, from, <laughs> from the other direction. Yeah. So we're not going to go up to Northampton, although we might live to regret this decision. We're going to carry on south. So this we may not live to regret the decision. That's the other possibility. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we don't end up coming down the River Neen. We will end up coming down the river now. Yeah, because it was... We might have to come across the water. Exactly, which is why we might not end up doing it. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so at Norton Junction, we are going to turn south and head up the Long Buck Bee Locks. There's six of them. We've walked... Seven of them. Six. Okay, I counted wrong. Maybe there's six. There's six or seven locks. Yeah. <laughs> and um, then after that, we're going to get water and then... There's nothing really after that till the Blissworth Tunnel. Yeah, so we're going to keep heading down towards Gaten Junction in the Blissworth Tunnel. We probably won't make it all the way today, but you never know. Shouldn't be the most craziest of days. Once the seven locks are done, you'll probably just get on and ride. Yeah, maybe. Because so. it's like seven miles down to Gaten Junction. Yeah, there's like a long stretch with nothing for me to do. So. Yeah. Or I might drive. But for now, me and George are going to walk. Yeah. Should we go? Cool. So yes, we just got to get our trains off and on our way. So we set off for like five minutes from Brownston before we came across Lynn and Kevin, some friends on their new narrowboat. Um, and we got to tour the narrowboat and I think that was great fun. We got to talk to them for a while. Turned out to be quite a long while, ended up being over an hour. We made it over here to the top lock um, above the uh, uh, flight of seven that takes us down towards the junction. And uh, George got fed a second breakfast because of a miscommunication, so he's possibly exploding. He's definitely having a bit of a food coma over there. And we're filling up with water and uh, we were hoping to take an, a uh, lock that had been left open by two boats coming up. Nice show. Hi. And uh, that got blocked by a... Not blocked. Someone just wanted to use it. They wanted to use it in a hurry. They didn't want to wait for us, which is fair enough. But fair enough. But he did uh, proceed to bash his rental boat into the side of the lock quite hard. Generally speaking, it didn't seem to be in the greatest mood. Maybe another boat will come along, or maybe a boat will come up. And... But in the meantime, there is uh, eggy bread without syrup, which is to me a travesty, but apparently a good thing. So it's a flight of seven locks. I, you keep saying seven. I Did yeah. you count them? No, no yes, I counted them. It says one and seven. Okay. So there are seven locks. Um, so unless I've, unless unless a bunch of people miscalculated something, I'm pretty sure there's seven locks. Did you see the um, CRT boats just around the corner pissing in the Armco? No. Yeah. Oh, cool. It was quite interesting. It's Sunday, so they weren't working today, but um, would it's have been quite kind of left in place. Yeah, it was, yeah. would have been quite interesting to see them. Yeah, I wonder how that it. stuff gets attached and put in. It must oh, be. it's like it's half done. You can see, but I couldn't explain it to you. Well, well I'm not walking back. So, um, yeah, onwards, downwards, downwards. Yeah. Downwards, onwards, and downwards. Uh, once we're at ten, we're at um, eight-ish. So that'll be a little bit of wait. Fire road. Fire road. And I think I'm gonna have to get George from over there because he's overheating. So I put him in the shade. The sun's moved. Yeah. Can I get him some water? But I think I'll move him as well. There's George. How many breakfasts have you had, George? Two full breakfasts. How are you feeling, George? A little bit overstuffed. A little bit. A uh, little bit rumbly in the tumblies. So the other boat is coming, so we get to share the seven lots hopefully, so that's really good news. So 
just came down one lock, heading towards the next one. Um, we were immediately followed up by another boat that was also going down, so we kind of sh could have waited if we'd known they were there, but we didn't. Now we know they're there. Joe's trying to figure out, she's going back to try and figure out how far they're going down. I'm going to set the next lock, and uh, if they're coming down all the way, then we'll just wait for them. That plane interrupted. They're not coming down. So we're waiting for this lock to fill up. waiting for Michael to open the gates for me to come out of this lock and all of a sudden I was back there and all of a sudden all this water came over the top of the gates and I was quite far back and like splashing me and um and then it started bubbling up down here more than it is now um because the people in the lock above had done something to the water and um like I was just about down and then I started going up again so it was all a bit weird but the gates are open now and I'm just waiting for the people in the next lock to open their gates so we can stop places. So I guess that's the trouble with uh, occasional boating. The last boat opened all six paddles, so this one was just draining. So that's how low they are. Uh, that's how much water they they drained out. came out of Wilton Marina and this is kind of an interesting place because although I can't really show it to you there is a motorway just over there an M road and then there's a canal right here and then there's train tracks literally right there and then just on the other side of the train tracks apparently there is the A5 which is an old Roman road so that Roman road's been here for like it's in 1800 years the canal here has been here for a couple hundred years the train tracks have been there for like a hundred years and the M5 has been there for like a 40 or 50 years. So all of this infrastructure, all these tr transport infrastructure just run side by side for this one stretch. It's just kind of strange. And oddly enough, just a minute ago, I was flown over by what appeared to be a World War II era Lancaster bomber, which is just a little bit of a surprise. And there's our train going past. So that, I believe, is as close as we get to the motorway, which is pretty close. I mean, it's kind of weird. But we're here on the canal, and they're whizzing past right there. But they're not having as much fun. been going since well nine I think. I was ready to stop after the locks but we've done like four hours since then. Um, I don't know, like Michael might be coming in tomorrow. Or maybe not. Do you see that swan you nearly ran over? 
<laughs> you got so close to it. Yeah, well, you, you, got, you got out of the way and you got a good meal for it. Did you feed him? which is where we aim to be and we also aim to stop at six so we've done quite well yeah i had said seven in the other side of the tunnel but uh, you said if we went to the other side of the tunnel it would be eight and you said you didn't want to do that yeah because i had this weird thought that like i don't want to do the tunnel in the dark but okay. then i rethought that so you know those days when everything just goes right and all the locks are in your favor and you meet someone to pair up with and oh, yeah. and like you just you don't meet anyone in bridges that wasn't this day no no so pretty Every much Every lock, wasn't Every it? lock was set. So first of all, the hire boat wouldn't wait for us when we were on the water point, which is fine. They didn't have to. And then there were some other people coming up. So that was great because then they were raising the lock up for us. That worked out well. And then as we went into that lock, another boat came off the mooring just behind us and came in. So we were like, yay, we have someone to share with. But then he was only going one lock. So I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got to the next lock and the boat came up behind us as we were going down. And I said, oh, we'll wait for you at the next lock. And they said, we're mooring up after this lock. So I said, no. <laughs> and then we got down to the next lock and we switched off and you started driving. And that one went okay. Yeah. It, it wasn't set for us, but it went okay. But then, what was it, the next one? The next one, um, there was a boat coming out. Yeah, I was trying to wave to get his crew to realize that we were coming down. Yeah. Because the lock was set for us and we were almost, we were already dropping. So it was like and we would have been able to make it. Yeah. But they didn't see us, so they dropped the water without us. And then it well, he just closed the lock. Uh, but then the next person coming up couldn't see us, so right. she dropped the the lock. So then, basically, we just lost the opportunity to sort of save some water there. So we yeah. had a long wait to, honey, yeah, it wasted some water. And then I set the next lock. You come in, and then I think we were dropping, or we dropped it. Yeah, so that was lock eleven. We were dropping in that one. There was someone coming up in the other one, so we're like, great. Um, we can actually swap in this lock and what I'd got to the bottom and you'd you got to the bottom I went going you forward. opened the door for me but I like I pulled out halfway and waited yeah because it was a short pound and then I really was short. running forward and I noticed that the water was sort of low and then I pound. looked at the lock and there were two people on the boat and there was this one woman who was going around by the time I got there I'm like the downstream paddles are still up and I'm waving at them I'm like I'm yelling they're still up you're just you're draining the lock and she just was like yes they are okay all the water's just shooting out of the back and you can almost see the pound draining. She, she'd kind of gotten confused about this. So I ran past and, um, and dropped those two. And, and, so I'm, I, and I'm obviously in that pound. So yeah. if you hadn't walked ahead, I'd have been on the you'd floor. Have, you'd have been stuck on the floor in the lock. You know, she was just like, well, it was our first time in quite a while cruising. And I'm like, yeah, I understand but that. But the there's second... also this great big bottle of wine on the back of their boat. So I'm like, <laughs> but it was the second lock they'd gone up. So they must have gone the first one. They'd, they'd done the first one and somehow they'd done the first one correctly. Nobody in the boat, neither the two people on the, on the bottom or her, none of the three people and actually noticed they... that the boat wasn't moving at all. By the time I got everything closed up, I think the pound had gone down about 18 inches. I took a clip of it when it started to go up again. Yeah, the... it started going up relatively rapidly. And yeah. then um, we left that lock, and finally, after the whole flight, the next one is in our favour. Like it had dropped the very last. Lock. It dropped an inch, so you just had to open the paddles and let me let me in. Yeah. And like those locks, on a good day, you could have done them probably half an hour quicker than we did them. Oh, I think more like forty-five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so it took ages. And then from there, it was fairly uneventful, except for the occasional near crash with couple of boats and yeah. stuff and yeah it was just uh, and it's really just a couple of like tight corners where there's a both times there was a great big tree and the and the tree made it impossible for me to see them yeah. and them to see me and then when i saw him i was like wow they're really just because of this big tree there really was only maybe 30 feet of room for him to continue moving. But he stopped and like he was much closer than you. Yeah. So like I don't think people understand that if you're closest then you can go and the other one to give way because on both the times or two or three times at least that I met 
um, boats and bridges. I was like the closest and I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Which is the right thing to do. It's just been like a really like idyllic summer, sunny day. I said to Michael, like, because um, this bit of the canal is lovely and it's noticeably different again yeah. as to where we were before or even on the Leicester line. I'm like, is this can bit of canal really nice or is it just a really nice day? <laughs> like, I think it's the really nice day and the bit of canal is... Is nice. Is nice. It's a little varied and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's kind of pleasant. Some places there's stretches that are quite, wider, some are more narrow. Quite a few moorings, yeah. permanent moorings, a few marinas. Hello. <laughs> So instead, we're going to continue past George is doing a poo on camera. We're going to continue past George he's, doing a poo. He's got this thing he does. Ah, George. He likes to steal the show. That's got to be it. He knows he's on camera. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The whole time he's out here, well, he wasn't out here very long, but like the whole time he's out here this morning, running around playing with the ball and everything, he's like, Nope, don't have to go, don't have to go. And the camera starts running. What's the first thing he does? It's a haul on to Market um, Milton Keynes. I don't know why I always say Market Keynes. <laughs> anyway, so we just got to get our trains off and we're on our way. Our trains off? Chains, not trains. We, we got to get our trains off. That's an entirely different problem. Glowing white, bright, because overexposure is a thing. What's one we've done today? I don't know. Michael's on lock duty, so we're going much slower now. The sun is in my eyes. Why do people say that? If the sun was in your eye, your head would have been absorbed like millions of miles ago. It's six o'clock, we've just moored up past. Ouch. It's not called Ouch, actually, it's called Bugabrookie or Bugbrook. Everything's called Bugabrookie. Bugbrook. Bugbrook.